Chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, I am in violent agreement with the statements you made after this report was published that nothing in the report impugns the patriotic work of the FBI employees who are serving in my district and around the world. Uh, and this mess in Washington has nothing to do with them. And I want to make that very clear. And I appreciate your statements on that subject. Uh, Deputy Director, the Democratic memo that the President declassified says the Department of Justice accurately informed the court that the FBI initiated its counterintelligence investigation on July 31st, 2016. Did any investigative activity regarding the Trump campaign in Russia occur before July 31st, 2016? Congressman, as you know, uh, we're dealing with the uh, Intelligence Committee on that issue, and uh, Chairman Nunes met with Director Ray and me. I received the same briefing that he received. So I don't know any additional information beyond what he knows about that, and I'm not able to produce any information beyond uh, what the FBI has told me. So, uh, I, well, there, Are you aware, as you sit here today, of any payments that were made to any person to collect intelligence on the Trump campaign prior to July 31st, 2016? No, but keep in mind I wasn't there. I only know what information that we've obtained from the FBI records. Are, are you, as you sit here today, aware of uh, any efforts to contact Roger Stone that occurred prior to July 31st, 2016? I don't have any personal knowledge, Congressman, but I know that we are seeking to respond to Chairman Nunes' request. I think one thing you need about to understand... Same question as it regards to Michael Caputo. I, I wasn't there, and so I can only answer questions that we direct to the FBI and then have them... You're there now, them. right? I mean, have you asked these questions of anyone? We, we have uh, absolutely conveyed all the questions that Chairman Nunes has raised. And I'm optimistic that we'll be able to respond to him fairly soon. You, you could understand why it would be of tremendous importance to the country that if, if the Department of Justice has represented to a court that this investigation began on July 31st, and if the fact that you cannot tell me definitively that before July 31st there was not intelligence collected on the Trump campaign, that that is something of great interest to us. Uh, Congressman, I, I think you should understand that uh, there is nobody more committed to rooting out abuse and misconduct than I. Uh, we talk with the FBI, we take those allegations seriously, and we look to find any credible evidence. If we find it, we're going to produce it to Chairman Nunes. Thank you. Let's do that quickly. And let's get into your, um, your determination to find out uh, that activity which is occurring in your department. At the last hearing we had, I asked you when you first became aware that Nellie Orr, the wife of your associate deputy attorney general, Bruce Orr, was working for Fusion GPS and was actively assigned to the dossier that said all these nasty things about President Trump. As you sit here today, do you know when you became first aware of that? I believe it would have been sometime in the fall of 2017. As I think I told you last time, Mr. Orr was never working, to my knowledge, uh, on that Russia investigation. Uh, and well, his wife, but his wife was, right? I mean, like, right. he's your assistant or your associate deputy attorney general, and his wife gets hired for that. I, I actually I asked you this question on the 13th of December. I wrote you a letter on the 18th of December, nine months ago. You have not responded to it. We need a date when you found out that the wife of your deputy was working for people who are actively trying to undermine President Trump. Don't you think that's a really important date for you to know about your, the spouse of your own associate deputy attorney general? Yes, I think it's important for you to understand, Congressman, Mr. Orr is a career employee of the department. He was there when I arrived. To my knowledge, he wasn't working on the Russia matter. I, I don't care if he's learned, well, I think years. it's important for you to know, sir, that when we learned the relevant information, we arranged to uh, transfer Mr. Orr to a different office. Let's get to and the... In addition to that... Get, hold sir, on, I'm sorry. i, I got to reclaim my time, Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, the FISA renewal that you signed, list for me the people who briefed you on the substance of that, of that FISA renewal to go and spy on people. So, Mr. Gates, here's one thing I think is important for you to understand. People can make all kinds of allegations publicly. Uh, I am quite confident about my conduct throughout this investigation. That matter is under review by the Inspector General. We'll see what the Inspector General Did finds. you read the FISA application before you signed it? I'm not going to comment about any FISA so, application. So you won't say to this committee whether or not you even read the document you signed that authorized spying on people associated with the Trump campaign? Well, I, I, I dispute your characterization of what that FISA is about, sir. Did you read uh, it or did I'll you not read it? I'll be happy to review. I'll be happy to discuss the details with you. But I, as I told you, well, sir... Did Peter Strzok brief you on it? No. Did Lisa Page brief you on it? No. Did Sally Moyer brief you on it? No, let me explain the process, if I may. Well, did Tricia Anderson brief you on it? Uh, well, no, no FBI personnel briefed me on it. The process, sir, is that these FISA applications and renewals first come up through the FBI chain of command. They are sworn under oath by a career federal agent. 
I'm not the affiant. Uh, but you then, signed it. The, the, well, I, I, I'll explain the process to you. Did you thoroughly review it, yes or no? I want to explain the process to you. The, the time I'm out of time has expired. Like the witness will be process. permitted to answer the question. I'd like to explain the process. And Director Ray uh, can explain it to you, sir. Uh, my responsibility at that time was to approve uh, the filing of FISA applications uh, because only three people in the department are authorized to be the final sign-off, the Attorney General, the Deputy, and the Assistant Attorney General for National Security, who at the time that position was vacant. Uh, so it was my responsibility to do that. Uh, I have fortunately been relieved of that responsibility. Director Ray still does it every day. Uh, and I don't know exactly what his process is, sir, but we sit down with a team of attorneys from the Department of Justice, uh, all of whom review that, provide a briefing for us about what's in it. And, sir, I've reviewed that one uh, in some detail. And I can tell you, sir, that the information that's public about that doesn't match with my understanding of the one that I signed. But I think it's appropriate to let the Inspector General complete that investigation. These are serious allegations. Uh, and uh, I don't do the investigation. I'm not the affiant. I'm reviewing the finished product, sir. Are if they the investigating Inspector you? General finds that I did something wrong, uh, then I'll respect that judgment. But I think it's highly, highly unlikely, sir, uh, given the way the process works. Well, we got a lot of uh, movement, a lot of traffic right now because the hearing after six hours uh, has just wrapped up. And if we're lucky, we may see the Deputy Attorney General and the FBI Director uh, heading down that way where we've got uh, a bank of cameras. Uh, one theme that really dominated the hearing today were these outstanding records uh, that show the FBI's intelligence activities prior to July 31st, 2016. That is when the Russia collusion case officially opened. Those records were first under subpoena in April and the subject of a very testy exchange earlier today. So your statement that I'm personally keeping information from you, trying to conceal information You're the boss, people, Mr. Rosenstein. That's, that's correct. And my job is to make sure that we respond to your concerns. We have, sir. Now, I've appointed Mr. Lausch, who is managing that production. And my understanding is it's actually going very well, sir. So I appreciate your concerns. Again, I think so the House of Representatives is going to say otherwise. But, but your use of this to attack me personally Why did you is I saw the wrong. Person. What we saw consistently from Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee today is that they were really on the offensive. They were doing what they could to reaffirm the decision making of the FBI director and the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Here's one exchange. Mr. Wright, are you one of those 13 angry Democrats that my Republican colleagues keep referring to? Well, Congressman, of course, I'm not working on the special counsel investigation. But you're the head of the FBI. Are you, are you, are you a, a Democrat? Did, did the president reach over to the Democratic Party, as, as uh, presidents have, and pick you because he wanted to have Democrats in his administration? Congressman, um, I'm trying to do this job apolitically, but I do not consider myself I do not consider myself an angry Democrat. You okay. can be quite confident. Are you a Democrat? That. I'm, uh, no, I am not. You're not. You're not a Democrat. Thank you. I should maybe I should have gone to that question. Ms. Res, Mr. Rosenstein, are you a Democrat? Uh, I'm not a Democrat, and I'm not angry. Okay, so that was a clear reference uh, to one of the many Trump, uh, Trump tweets that we've had uh, on the subject. A couple of sort of housekeeping matters on uh, Agent Strzok. Uh, Agent Strzok, uh, a number of times during his uh, closed-door uh, interview yesterday, refused to uh, answer questions. And what we learned today is that one of those questions had to do with his contact with the co-founder of the opposition research firm Fusion GPS. That was the firm uh, behind the dossier. And we also learned that special counsel Robert Mueller has taken specific steps to see if Agent Strzok made any direction, uh, chose any, sorry, decisions, or took the special counsel investigation in a direction that really was a reflection of the political bias that is seen in the text messages, Shep. Catherine, in the middle of all of this, it's my understanding the House Republicans passed a resolution. That's right. Uh, this is a non-binding resolution. It calls on the Deputy Attorney General to provide the remaining records that are sought by these three committees, House Judiciary, House Intelligence, and House Oversight. That was a vote, uh, 226 Republicans uh, to 183 uh, Democrats. One of the sort of testy moments in the hearing came with uh, Congressman Darrell Issa, and he asked the Deputy Attorney General, look, if we go forward on contempt and we want to pursue it in the district court in Washington, will you throw up any roadblocks? And here that is. Do you believe that 
you have the ability to be above the law, something the American people do not. No, sir, I do not have the ability to be Good. Above Since the you law. do not believe that, I will take that as if you're held in well, contempt, it question. will go forward. You said no, and yes or no was fine, that you don't believe you're above the law. So that really will come to some kind of resolution uh, probably the week of July 6th because they're going to be heading into the congressional recess. But again, I just want to emphasize it's a non-binding resolution, but the idea is to really send a political message and set the table for some Republicans who believe that contempt or even impeachment uh, is, uh, is necessary or even justified in this situation, Chef. Catherine Harrods on Capitol Hill. Thank you, Catherine. So we are about 20 minutes away from the start of this House Judiciary Committee hearing room with uh, Christopher Wray, the FBI Director, Rod Rosenstein. They'll be in there a day after the anti-Trump agent from the FBI. Peter Strzok faced 11 hours of questions from Republicans. Jim Jordan was in that room. He was one of six doing the questioning. And, sir, you're with me now. Good morning to you before you head in that hearing room. I, I was a bit you. surprised by John Ratcliffe's commentary there a moment ago. He said Peter Strzok did not yeah. help himself, and Peter Strzok did not help Bob Mueller. What happened there? Yeah, very true. I mean, well, we can't get into all the details until the transcript is released, but I will tell you, when Mr. Ratcliffe was questioning Mr. Strzok yesterday about the day he was kicked off the Mueller team, about the day he was fired, frankly, uh, and what took place in that very short meeting, I think John is exactly right. It doesn't help Peter Strzok, and it certainly doesn't help Bob Mueller. Wow. Um, does it make you wonder? Well, I mean, I, I just can't get into the details until we release the transcript. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be patient on that because we've got a hearing coming up, and the story is yeah. going to take on a new flavor here right. in about 15 minutes. Uh, do, do you wonder if Peter Strzok's yep. going to testify publicly now? Because uh, the members of your committee say it will happen in, in July within two weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether or not yeah, that happens I, now. Yeah, I think so, and I, I think it, a subpoena is needed because if he said it once, he said it dozens and dozens and dozens of times yesterday when he said, on advice of FBI counsel, I can't answer that question. I'm going to ask Mr. Rosenstein today, why did you tell, why did you, Mr. Ray, tell Peter Strzok not to answer our questions? I mean, we asked questions that were not with, that were totally in the scope of the, of the Russia investigation when the FBI was still doing it. In other words, before May 17, 2017, when Bob Mueller was named special counsel, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Strzok refused to answer those questions, and each and every time it was on advice of FBI counsel, I can't answer that question, which he can't answer it. It's just some rule the FBI has that they're not going to let Congress get that information while there's supposedly an investigation, well, well while there is an investigation going on. Okay, all right, just uh, s slow it down just a second. W w what do you think you conclude right now from 11 hours of questions and answers? I, the conclusion, I think, is simple. There's a resolution on the floor today telling Mr. Rosenstein, you got seven days to turn over to Congress what we've subpoenaed and what we've asked for. Yesterday was just a continuation of the Justice Department not giving Congress, a separate and equal branch of government, the information we are entitled to get to get answers for you and the press and, more importantly, for the American people. So that's the problem, and that's what Mr. Rosenstein is going to have to answer for and Mr. Ray today in our hearing. Okay, so they may, they may comply with your documents within a week. Let, let's see what happens there. But address this tweet from the they president. Better. Yeah, one, one hour ago, this is what he said about Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok worked as the leader of the rigged witch hunt for a long period of time. He got it started and was only fired because the gig was up. But remember, he took his orders from Comey and McCabe, and they took their orders from you-know-who, Mueller slash Comey best friends. You see the implication there. Is he right about that? Pick Peter Strzok was the lead agent on the Clinton investigation, lead agent on the Russian investigation, went on Mueller's team, kicked off Mueller's team, and would not answer our questions yesterday. Department of Justice will not give us the documents we've requested and the documents that have been subpoenaed. That is the problem. That's what Mr. Rosenstein and Mr. Ray are going to have to answer to in just a few minutes when we start the hearing. That's why it's so important we get this information, so we can get answers and find out exactly what took place. Do you believe the Mueller case has been blown up by what you've heard in the last 24 hours? Yes or no? I, I, I think you have to question it. I mean, look, I've always said let him finish his investigation. We'll go from there. But I want the information. There's nothing that says Congress can't do an investigation, can't get all the information at the same time Mr. Mueller's doing his. This is just a rule the FBI has and the DOJ has. Let us do our investigation, too. After all, ours is a constitutional duty to get answers for the American people. Allow us to do that, Mr. Rosenstein. And that's, again, the questions that I'll be asking, and I'm sure many other members will be as well. I'll let you head inside. Thank you for taking a moment with us today. Jim Jordan, the Republican Thanks, from Bill. Ohio. That hearing begins in moments. Thank you, sir. Republican Congressman Chris Stewart, a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, this got 
really chippy today, as we say in, in hockey. What are the points of news, the headlines that you're that you're seeing here? Well, it did get chippy, and it should be chippy. Oh, my gosh. Can the FBI or DOJ make it any more frustrating? Can they make this any more longer and painful than they have? And it's completely unnecessary. So there's a number of lawmakers, myself included, who for a long time have been saying, look, we're not asking for something unreasonable here. We're asking for just pure accountability that we have responsibility to provide the American people. And yet, like I say, it's like a, a death by a thousand cuts to get uh, Mr. Rosenstein and, and unfortunately Mr. You know, Ray in some cases. You know, Congressman Stewart is, and, and you and I have talked about this before, but now it's full front and center. You've got Rosenstein, you've got Ray. I mean, you know, Ray is somebody the president supported. Why is it so difficult? I mean, not to pull politics into this, but just negotiating document releases and FISA yeah. applications. Why is it so yeah. hard? Well, I think at the end of the day, and this isn't very difficult, at the end of the day, it's because they are embarrassed by their activities. And in some cases, mm -hmm. I think they're trying to obfuscate or to uh, at least make it very difficult for us what we what we believe is actually in some cases illegal activity and that's that's just the simple explanation but it's also the truth and let me give you a real quick example of that I mean just one example we had uh, some pr material provided to us a page and a half or so was redacted for issues of national security mm -hmm. and then when we finally get that information it's about paying seventy thousand dollars for a conference table it had nothing to do with national security it was just embarrassing to them that's one small example but it's not not an important mm. example. The far more important examples are these meaningful questions about how they conducted their investigation, and yet they hide and they delay, and they it's kind of like hide the bunny. You know, we'll give you 880,000 pages of documents that the, Mr. Rosenstein mentioned today, when we really yeah. only want a few hundred, and they make us, you know, burr, burr our way through all of this other material, again, as a way to say, yeah, we've complied, but make it impossibly difficult for us. So there are a couple of things going on here, and I, you know, as we talk about what is is at stake. You've got a political party that paid for opposition research with a company that had some interesting ties to important people at the DOJ, a wife of a member, yeah. so on and so forth. You've got an FBI, two agents with their hands all over a couple of investigations. One, the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Did she get special treatment because of what they were carrying out? And also their text messages going back and forth, showing us clearly that they had a plan to keep the president out of the White House. So yeah. as we watch this today, what do you want to see asked? I mean, I know you're in House Intel, and you guys are perched watching the Judiciary Committee today. What are you watching for? Well, there's a couple things. One of them is, you know, the, we've been told again and again and again that this inquiry into the Russian uh, supposed Trump collusion started at the end of July. And if that's true, then let us, uh, let us understand this. Did you run informants into the campaign previous to that? Because there's certainly indications that they did, and not just one, but perhaps several, maybe even many. And if you were doing that previous to July, on what basis were you doing that? Mm. Show us the evidence. Show us the concern that you had. And those, that's the thing that we're focusing on now, and that's very important. For one thing, does it show that they've been honest with us? And the second thing is, if everything they've told us up to this point isn't true, and they had information previous to that, once again, what was it, or was there any? But, you know, if I could just make this kind of general observation, we can't live in a country where we give the Department of Justice enormous power, and especially into something like an opposition political campaign, and say, go do what you want, send spies, eavesdrop, listen yeah. to messages, and, and read text, and then don't come tell us. We don't want to know. No one wants to live in a country like that, that you would give them that kind of power and no accountability, especially, like I said, into a, a political campaign, a presidential campaign. All we're asking is that they be honest with the American people. You know, I, I have to be honest, as we watch this and I see on social media, people don't understand, is this the way you get information? They see hearing after hearing, deposition after deposition, some are private, some are full-blown public like today. And the question is, will there ever be accountability? Congressman Stewart, Thank you for being with me Thank for this. You. We'll continue to bring you live uh, all of the action that happens on Capitol Hill today with that.